Welcome to the 5 Minute Biographies YouTube channel. Here is your host, Wayne Armstrong. Hi guys, thanks for watching the show. Just a quick reminder to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of the biographies we've got coming along in the future. That being said, let's get on with the show and the 5 Minute Biographies presentation of Jackie Robinson. Jack Roosevelt Robinson, known as Jackie, was born on the 31st of January 1919 in Cairo, Georgia, USA. He was the last of five children born into a family of sharecroppers, which meant that they worked the land for a landowner in return for a share of the crops they produced. Jackie's middle name was given to him in honour of President Theodore Roosevelt, who had died only 25 days before he was born. Before Jackie was one year old, his father Jerry left the family, and so his mother, Mally, moved along with Jackie and his three brothers, Edgar, Frank and Matthew, and his sister, Willa May, to a small plot containing two houses at 121 Pepper Street in Pasadena, California. The neighbourhood itself was rather affluent compared to what the family had known before, but as Mally only had a few odd jobs with which to pay the bills, they themselves were relatively poor. Due to the lack of things to do for a kid in the neighbourhood, Jackie was tempted to join in the gang culture, but was persuaded not to by his friend Carl Anderson. In 1935, Jackie went to John Muir High School following his graduation from Washington Junior High and was persuaded to pursue his interest in sports by his brothers Matthew and Frank. It should be noted that Jackie was not the only member of his family to become an accomplished sportsman. His brother Matthew, also known as Mac, would become a silver medalist at the 1936 Summer Olympics. Jackie played a number of sports at school, including football, where he played quarterback, basketball, where he played guard, and baseball, where he played shortstop and catcher. He also enjoyed track events and was a member of the tennis team. The Pasadena Star News in 1937 reported that Jackie had been the outstanding athlete at Muir for two years running. And after he graduated from Muir, Jackie went to college at Pasadena Junior College, where he continued his interest in football, basketball, baseball and track. In 1938, he was elected to the baseball team for the All Southland Junior College team and became the region's most valuable player. And during the same year, he was recognised by the college for the commitment and dedication he showed to his work and for the outstanding service he gave to his school. Also during this time, Jackie was persuaded to attend church regularly by Reverend Carl Downs, who became a confidant for him. He was also starting to have regular run-ins with authority figures, including the police, especially when he or his friends became the targets of racially motivated incidents. Towards the end of his time at Pasadena Junior College, the brother he was closest to, Frank, was killed in a motorcycle accident. This led to Jackie wanting to stay close to Frank's family and so he decided to pursue his athletics career at UCLA, which was nearby. At UCLA, Jackie Robinson once again excelled at his four chosen sports and became part of what was at the time the most integrated college football team in the country, the UCLA Bruins, as he was one of four black players on the team. He won accolades in track and field and also met Rachel Isom, who would become his future wife, whilst at UCLA. However, in early 1941, he left college to get a job as assistant athletic director with the National Youth Administration. When the government disbanded the programme, Robinson travelled to Hawaii and played semi-professional football for the Honolulu Bears. He soon returned to California, though, but what looked to be a professional football career in the making was stopped dead when in December of 1941 the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor. Jackie was drafted in 1942 and was assigned to a segregated Army Cavalry unit. As he had the qualifications, he applied to officer school, but although the policy was for officer school to be racially neutral, few black applicants were admitted. It took some intervention from an aide to the Secretary of War, Truman Gibson, and protests by none other than world heavyweight boxing champion Joe Lewis before Jackie would be admitted. 
After this, Jackie was made a second lieutenant, and he and Joe Lewis became friends. At around the same time, Jackie and Rachel were formally engaged. Jackie was assigned to the Black Panthers, otherwise known as the 761st Tank Battalion. The Black Panthers was the first black tank unit to see combat, but Jackie wasn't with them. An incident involving his refusal to travel at the back of a bus whilst travelling to have his ankle looked at, which he had injured during college, eventually led to a court-martial. He was acquitted of all charges, but the proceedings took so long that he never saw combat duty. He served as an army athletics coach in Kentucky until he received his honourable discharge in 1944. Whilst in Kentucky, though, Jackie was persuaded to write to the Kansas City Monarchs, a baseball team which was part of the Negro American League, in order to ask for a tryout, and in 1945 he signed for the team on $400 per month. He didn't enjoy his time in the Negro Leagues, though. The hectic schedule kept him away from Rachel, and he was appalled at the league's embrace of gambling and at its seemingly chaotic structure. He played 47 games for the Monarchs. During the season, Jackie pursued an interest in the major leagues. The Boston Red Sox held a tryout for him and other black players, but this was a farce and he was subjected to racial insults. He left humiliated. Other clubs showed more serious interest, though, and Jackie eventually signed a $600 per month contract to play for the Montreal Royals in the 1946 season. The main gain for Jackie was that the gruelling schedule of the Monarchs was now behind him, and so he was able to return to Pasadena. On the 10th of February 1946, Jackie Robinson and Rachel Isom were married. They would go on to have three children, Jackie Jr. in 1946, Sharon in 1950, and David in 1952. When the 1946 season started, Jackie struggled to get a game as various officials in Florida refused to allow any game to take place which involved a black player. It would take some serious lobbying before a game was eventually allowed to take place, but on the 17th of March 1946, Robinson played in an exhibition game between the Montreal Royals and its parent team, the Brooklyn Dodgers, making Jackie the first black player to openly play in a game featuring a major league baseball team. His professional debut in the minor leagues came on the 18th of April 1946 when Montreal met the Jersey City Giants at Roosevelt Stadium in New Jersey. Robinson led the International League that season and was named the most valuable player. Over one million fans attended baseball games which featured Jackie Robinson in 1946. The Major League colour barrier was broken the following year when Montreal's parent team, the Brooklyn Dodgers, called Jackie Robinson up to the Majors. He made his debut as first baseman on the 15th of April 1947. Robinson would continue to receive racial abuse in the Major Leagues too. Players would refuse to play with him and there was talk of a strike but this was leaked to the press. The National League stamped on any talk of a strike by advising all players that they would be suspended indefinitely, and what's more, the press was seen to be on Jackie's side, and made it clear that any striking player would not receive any support. This didn't stop Jackie being the target of some rough play on the field, though, and continued racial abuse from the fans. However, all of this resolved to unite the Brooklyn Dodgers team even more than they already were. It wasn't all bad, though and many players from other teams showed their support for Jackie, including Lee Hanley and Pee Wee Reese, to name two. Pee Wee Reese is famously quoted as saying, You can hate a man for many reasons. Colour is not one of them. Robinson finished the 1947 season as Major League Baseball Rookie of the Year. The racial pressure on Jackie Robinson started to ease during the 1948 season as a number of other black players joined the league. He signed a $12,500 contract and made more money during the off-season on a vaudeville tour answering preset baseball questions. In 1949, Jackie spent hours at the batting tee to improve his batting, and with the help of Hall of Famer George Sizzler, he made significant improvements to his batting average, which, along with other improvements, helped him to become 1949's most valuable player. He was also becoming a national treasure, with songs being written about him making the charts. 
1950, Jackie became the highest paid Dodger of all time with a $35,000 annual salary and led the National League in double plays by a second baseman. He stole 12 bases and made 99 runs by the end of the year, and during the same year Jackie also became a movie star, when he appeared as himself in the Jackie Robinson story. In 1951, Jackie nearly won the pennant with the Dodgers, but they were defeated by the New York Giants in a best-of-three playoff series, which was ultimately won by the home run from Bobby Thompson after the famous shot heard all around the world. The Dodgers would win the National League pennant in 1952, but lost the World Series to the New York Yankees. In terms of his personal performance, 1952 was an average year for Jackie, and would be the last as everyday starter at second base. History repeated itself in 1953, with the Dodgers winning the pennant but losing the World Series to the Yankees. Through that season, Jackie played in various positions and was becoming more and more interested in the possibilities associated with managing a ball team. He also continued to publicly address racial issues and served as editor for Our Sports magazine, using the platform to openly criticise segregated hotels and restaurants, some of which changed their ways as a result. 1954 would be the year that Jackie Robinson would become part of a championship winning team when the Dodgers beat the New York Yankees in that year's World Series. In terms of his personal performance though, it was Jackie's worst. He was now 37 years old and had missed 49 games, including the seventh game of the World Series. After the end of the 1956 season, Jackie Robinson was traded by the Dodgers to the New York Giants for $35,000 cash, but the deal was never completed as Robinson had already decided to retire. He retired from baseball on the 5th of January 1957, and later the same year was diagnosed with diabetes. He was inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1962. He tried his hand at a number of things after baseball, including politics, and served as chairman of the board for Freedom National Bank. He also formed a construction company to help build low-cost housing and tried his hand at being a sports announcer for ABC. He made his last public appearance when he threw the ceremonial first pitch at the start of Game 2 of the World Series on the 15th of October 1972. His diabetes continued to cause his health to deteriorate, and by middle age, Jackie Robinson was almost blind. He had also developed heart disease. All of this came together on the 24th of October 1972. Nine days after throwing that ceremonial first pitch at the World Series, Jackie Robinson died. He was 53 years old. We hope you enjoyed that episode of 5 Minute Biographies. If you did, please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for plenty more videos to come.